Good afternoon. Welcome to the Midday Mole for Saturday, the 29th of May. We continue reading through Acts chapter 2, the coming of the Spirit at the Feast of Pentecost. And we saw the Spirit came down on all the disciples, probably a hundred or more of them. And it sounded like a mighty wind and it looked like fire and it came and rested on every single one of them. We continue in verse 5. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this, they all came together and they heard the, the disciples speaking in their languages. And it goes on to list the people, uh, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Rome, Libya, Cyrene. Everybody heard the word of God in their own language. Now today that's kind of a, a self-evident idea that the gospel is for every nation. Every single uh, nation in the world needs to hear the gospel. That goes without saying. But 2,000 years ago, I, I suspect it wasn't quite the same thing. Up to that point, in Judaism, God was for the Jews. If you weren't Jewish, God wasn't for you. You made up your own God, you did what you liked, but if you wanted to become, to worship this God, you had to become Jewish. You had to become part of the people of Israel. It is a very um, nationalistic uh, religion, as were all religions back then. The notion that a religion was applicable to every single nation was completely foreign. But suddenly that appears and every single person hears in their own language. Not there, there, There's no one in the list that says, oh, I'm from Mesopotamia, I don't hear my language. No, it was in their language. And today that we, we understand that and we say, yes, the gospel is for everybody. There's nobody that would say, oh, the people of Patagonia, we better not send missionaries there because the gospel is not for them. No, we recognize the gospel is for everybody. But we need to stop and think to ourselves, who might we think the gospel wouldn't really apply to them, or they beyond the pale of the gospel? And it might not be other nationalities, but there are all sorts of other divides in society that might limit people. And in polite society, we'd have to say, oh, the gospel's not really for the Jews or the Muslims or the Hindus or somebody who has another religion, because contemporary contemporary society says you can't evangelize other people that's not polite your you may have your religion but you leave them with their religion and so today we'd say the gospel is not for those other people in polite society we might think that the gospel is not for people of that class or from that part of town or those people with that kind of background probably the gospel wouldn't really apply to them and so today we would exclude people from the gospel for all sorts of other reasons. And we need to step back and say, no, the gospel is for everyone. It doesn't matter what your background is, where you come from, what language you speak, what your gender, what your identity, how you see yourself, what your past, what your burdens, no matter what has gone on, the gospel is for you. And it doesn't matter whether you're a very, very devout Buddhist, the gospel can still be for you, the gospel is for everyone. And so we need to be praying that that would happen, that we would be able to spread the gospel. We pray for missionaries around the world, but we've got to pray that, that the churches in our town and in our city spread the gospel, reach out and bring people to faith. That's what we're here for. So be praying that that, that would work, that that outreach would happen, and that everybody we know would hear the gospel from someone, sometime, somehow. Every nation heard of the good news in their own language. We need to continue that.